Uh, it is a pleasure to present today on UDR vigilance and signal detection. I will do that in hopefully less than 10 minutes. So in this talk, I will discuss the burden of adverse drug reactions. I will provide a uh, high-level overview of data we have in UDR vigilance with regards to spontaneous reports in elderly. I will touch base on signal detection, but I will focus on opportunities for improvement in terms of data collection and data evaluation. Uh, so this is data from the impact analysis in preparation for the new pharmacovigilance legislation and concerns the general population. So 5% uh, of all hospital admissions were due to adverse drug reactions, and 5% of all hospital patients suffer an adverse drug reaction. Um, importantly, a, uh, ADRs were the fifth most common cause of hospital debt, and uh, this is estimated that nearly 200,000 deaths per year occur in the EU that they're due to ADRs, and that uh, represents a, a quite a significant cost for society. And we've heard this morning that in elderly patients that are polymedicated, uh, this is even of higher relevance, and, and all these numbers we probably uh, will be multiplied several times. So clearly, uh, post uh, pre authorization clinical trials uh, uh, due to, to, to not significant size cannot detect uh, and characterize every adverse event. They're also performing control conditions, so it cannot really be generalized to the um, uh, real life practice. And special populations such as elderly, as we've discussed extensively, are underrepresented. Therefore, there is an important need for continuous safety monitoring in the post authorization phase and spontaneous reports. Uh, are one important source of information, and I will focus on, on, on this one. So Eurovigilance is a system that has been created 10 years ago in order to collect suspected adverse reaction uh, for all the medicines that are authorized in the Euro European economic area. Um, and these uh, uh, suspected adverse reactions are either occurring in the, e, uh, in the uh, European economic area or outside of the European economic area. And we use that system for signal detection um, that I will go to. Mm -hmm. So since 2005, um, the, uh, electronic reporting became mandatory. And here you see uh, the evolution of reports per month that we receive uh, in UDR vigilance. So nowadays we have about between 50 and 60,000 reports that are received per month, so a significant amount of information. This, so uh, all those put together, that gives us about 3 million uh, individual cases. And if we count the follow-up reports, that comes to over 5 million. And as you can see in the post-authorization module, uh, there is a significant percentage of reports that uh, concern elderly patients, so about 25%. And there's uh, also uh, a significant number of reports for which we cannot identify the age. So this. Uh, what we call data quality issues, so clearly an area uh, that we need to, to look for improvement. So briefly an overview of what we have in UDR vigilance. If you look at uh, spontaneous reports uh, in the older population, about 85% are serious. Of, of those, um, if you look down um, in the graph, you'll see that 14% uh, 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 resulted in debt and about 45 uh, resulted in hospitalization. If you look at the origin of these reports, about 41 comes from the European Economic Area, and the rest is uh, outside of the EEA. So uh, looking at the um, suspected adverse, uh, suspected medication reported for ADRs in elderly, well, by ATC code, what we see is that um, uh, antineoplastic and, and immunomodulating agents are on the first place for those report followed by uh, nervous system, cardiovascular, blood and blood forming organs, etc. And if you look at the top uh, 10 uh, preferred terms or medical terms uh, for reports that are coming from the EU, you see nausea, dyspnea, vomiting, diarrhea, thrombocytopenia, pyrexia, pruritus, dizziness, confusional state, and rash, and those are reports uh, in elderly. Now there are multiple opportunities for improvement in data collection and transparency. And you've heard already uh, this morning uh, the opportunities that the new pharmacovigilance legislation provides. So one important part is the we are all aware that spontaneous, uh, uh, an important limitation of spontaneous reports is underreporting. So uh, we have to tackle that. And um, we need to continue to, to launch targeted campaigns to increase awareness. 
uh, there's also um, uh, new provisions in the legislation, such as additional monitoring uh, that will increase transparency, but also will increase reporting, specifically for substances for which we have uncertainty uh, with regards to safety. There's also a new definition of the adverse reaction in the, in the legislation, uh, which stimulates reporting of adverse reaction related to overdose, abuse, misuse, and medication, where, which are highly relevant in, the, um, in elderly patients. We also need to, to look into improved data quality, so this is general, uh, the information that we receive uh, uh, through spontaneous reports, and we have to look into encouraging reporting of age. We had a, a good vigilance practice modules that are now under uh, public consultation, and in the chapter for, for uh, ADI reporting, we have a specific section that uh, emphasizes the need for uh, reporting in special populations such as uh, um, uh, elderly patient, and, and specifically the need to report the age because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do signal detection in this in this population. So Dolores also talked about facilitation of patient reporting. Um, so I will uh, I'll skip that one. And um, an important initiative is the increased transparency. And in this spirit, um, next month we are launching a, a database, a website where. Um, where patients, healthcare professionals, the general public can access information, aggregated data on centrally authorized products to start with, and that will be extended then to all the products authorized in the EEA. So uh, just to give you a flavor of what this data will, uh, what this website uh, will, uh, will contain, there will be summary information on um, all the individual case safety reports that are contained, that will be represented by age group. And you see for elderly, we have foreseen uh, between 65, the age brackets are between 65 and 85, and over 85. We felt that's appropriate, but that's open for, uh, for, for, for considerations. There's also a uh, split by uh, sex, as well as the origin of these reports. Now, users can drill further and um, uh, look at the overview at uh, system organ class. So they can see, for example, for all cardiac disorders in the different uh, age groups and sex, what is the number of reports and uh, how many of those are coming from healthcare professionals, how many are reported by patients and what is the origin of these reports. And then the next level would be to go to reaction uh, uh, level and look at, at, at medical terms specifically uh, that are related to either a product or substance, so there are these two options for the search. Uh, and again, uh, the same split by age group and sex and um, uh, pro, uh, origin, uh, and, and also the, the outcome of the event when we come to that level. Okay, so briefly signal management is old. So this is a set of activities for us to, 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 to determine if there are new risks or, or, or if known risks have changed. And there are several steps. Uh, the first step is signal detection, what I'm focusing today on, but also followed by signal evaluation, then prioritization, analysis, assessment, and recommendation for action. So um, we do uh, review all the data in user vigilance on a regular basis, and there are provisions in the legislation that strengthen this monitoring by the EU network. Uh, baseline monitoring will be monthly, but we'll do that every two weeks, for example, uh, for products that are under additional monitoring or any other cases where we need to look closer into, into the reports. So this, this represents an output uh, where for medical terms we use uh, signals of disproportionate reporting, and that flags basically um, uh, where there could be a signal of disproportionate reporting and where, the new, uh, where there are new events that have been reported. And what we've recently added, and I have to admit we haven't told about that before this initiative started, is we actually added the, the, the number of reports that relate to elderly. Um, so all the new ones and what is the total of elderly. And I believe this will be very helpful for us to focus on uh, signal detection in this group of patients. So um, opportunities to, to strengthen signal detection because we have all this huge amount of information, but it is very important for us to focus uh, on, on the issues at hand and also to use tools that will help us to, to filter this, this huge amount of information. So few few proposals, a uh, few, few, you know, food for thought, if you wish, uh, to enhance focus signal detection is to perhaps uh, consider creating a targeted medical event list 
um, a list of drug-drug interaction, and medication error, and focus on dose. Uh, further research in signals of disproportionate reporting in subgroups, and there is an initiative under the IMI Protect Work Package 3 that deals with that, so we're looking forward to those results. We should also consider possibilities for developing algorithms for drug, uh, um, drug, drug, and drug disease interactions. And this is not a, uh, necessarily, a, uh, it's quite a complex area, but I believe it's something we should, uh, we should invest efforts in. We should also perhaps characterize and understand better the patterns of adverse uh, drug reactions in elderly, which could be different from those in, in adults. And uh, we should consider creating standard matter queries to support signal detection by focusing on areas of interest. And we can perhaps think of creating a list of drugs that are of interest, of, uh, in, of interest in elderly, so we can focus our attention on those. Okay, to conclude, clearly ADR is a big burden for patients and society, and even more so in the uh, older population. Signal detection is an important uh, method uh, um, in the posterization setting, and it's especially relevant in subpopulation that were underrepresented in clinical trials. We have a lot of opportunities with the, with the new pharmacovigilance legislation to reduce the bur this burden of ADRs, and we should think of focusing that in, in elderly patients where the, the, the greater need is. Uh, and we do have opportunities for data collection and, 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 and data analysis that we should consider carefully and, and, and implement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Georgi, and, and, and thank you for uh, introducing us to this enormously rich resource, which is the Univision's database and, and the important initiatives that have already been launched to enhance uh, pharmacovigilance and public health protection in the area of the elderly. Uh, I think we have time for maybe one burning question, if there is, sir. Uh, hand straight up, over to you. Thank you for your nice presentation. I would like to ask a question. Uh, what, in your opinion, would be the best way to, to improve pharmacovigilance in the most frail and uh, uh, the less compliant patients? I mean, it's... Uh We'll have to ensure, I mean, if I focus on, this, on, on, on the on this type of signal detection analysis, which was my talk about, uh, we will have to ensure that we get these reports. I think this is the first thing. If we don't have the information, we cannot analyze the information. And then of this huge amount of information that we get from spontaneous reports, we have to, we have to find ways and tools to focus on this, uh, on this population. We have to learn more about this population, I believe, to, to, to use the tools in the right direction.